Alrighty, welcome to Patty's Crafty Spot, and we are all set. I'm going to show you how to go ahead and make this. I just want to thank you for stopping by and checking out my tutorial. This is a multi-part tutorial video series. I will link them all down below to you, as well as the final review on this mini album. I hope you have fun creating this. If you have any questions, please leave them down below and I will get back to you. If you do happen to make this, please tag me. I am on all social media at Patty's Crafty Spot and I would love to see what you made if you went ahead and made this album. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the video series and thank you so much for stopping by. Be sure to give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button for more videos and enjoy guys. Have fun. Okay guys, so we're going to get started on this page right here. So on the left hand side, there is a stack of three pockets and this page has this crazy pullout with all different types of cuts and angles and stuff like that. So let's be honest. I want you guys to make this book. This I think is going to scare you people away. You're going to be think that it's too complicated to do. And I will admit that this is not a beginner. Um, a beginner person page so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this up a little bit I will go back later on in case people do want to know how I made this and I'll do that in another total separate video but I want you guys to make this book and I think this is going to scare you away so I've come up with something that I hope is going to still be unique and you're going to enjoy it so it's kind of a little more simple and so what we're going to do is just like the other page, so this is going to be piece B, A, and this is going to be an 8 by 8 cut piece. No score lines on this one here. And pattern paper is going to be 7 and 3 quarters by 7 and 3 quarters because I want to go ahead and lay it on just like that. So let's try to think how I want to do this. I want to... It'll go underneath. Okay, so let's continue prepping our pieces. So you're going to want one piece that is going to be, let's see. Oops, I'm out of order. Hold on. So the stack pockets on the left hand side here. So on these ones here, you're going to want to cut one piece, four by three, and two pieces at four by two and a half. You're going to score on each side at a half inch and you're going to make a pocket Oops. and two of the pieces you're the two shorter pieces you're just going to score put score tape on each side here in the bottom part of your pocket you're going to just go ahead and apply tape all the way around and I'm just going to zoom in I feel like I'm too far away yes yeah, too close okay so I'm going to go ahead first off and I'm going to go ahead and glue down my pattern paper. So let's go ahead and do that first. The more I was looking at that other pocket, as pretty as it is, I really think people are going to be intimidated by it. So I wanted to give you another option. That way you actually go ahead and make this. I have a feeling if it looks too complicated, it's going to scare everybody. And even though it's a Halloween book, I don't want to scare anyone. I want you to make this. So, got that done. So just like the other one, I'm going to go ahead and add my score tape to the back side of this one right now. And again, if you want to use glue, you don't need to do this part. almost done now I am using five inch five eight inch score tape for this back side here just because I want a little wider tape coverage so I am using five eighths on that okay so we are all good to go here so let's go ahead and add these little pockets here oops so I'm just gonna go ahead and Miter my corners off. Oops. 
can't cut it when it's in the way. Let me just get my glue real quick before it dries up. All right, and then my little stack pockets, just going to angle. And now on this one here, so get some room here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to score, I mean, fold on my score lines. And burnish them all down. These ones here with the little bottom flap, we're not going to touch this bottom piece. We are just simply going to fold our side pieces over, burnish those well. Now what I want to do on this piece here is, let me just double check, yep. so I'm going to come right all the way over. So I want to eyeball and leave approximately a quarter inch of my pattern paper from the bottom and the side here. So I'm going to go ahead and eyeball that pretty good. And I'm going to go ahead and let's actually do it, I want to show you something. So this is, so I'm going to take my paper, it's obviously the same, but this is the bottom part right here. I'm just going to rotate it a little bit. My pocket has got the open flap right here, so it's going to go like this. So again, I'm going to eyeball to make sure roughly a quarter inch from the bottom and the side here. I'm going to go ahead and untuck this flap. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure I'm lined up and I'm going to press it down. Now I'm just going to rotate it back to normal. So have you ever tried to put tags and stuff in your pockets and you get caught on this piece here that's inside? Let me show you a little trick I do. Is I'm going to take a little piece of scotch tape and I'm just going to put it right along the bottom here. So there's no lip here. So you're kind of creating a little ramp, so to speak, and your paper will just slide right through. So now I'm going to go ahead and fold it up. So now you can just remove my score tape from both sides. And make sure nothing's overhanging. Now when I do it this way, I kind of just hold the middle and just work my way out. So that way it lines up nice and even. And then now your stuck pockets, you're just going to tuck in and go ahead and put them in. So you can go ahead and remove your tape, both sides of these. These are little, so if I was doing a longer pocket, I would do it a little differently. I would kind of stick it in and then remove my tape after, but I don't need to do it that way. And Still making sure I am a quarter inch away right there. Make sure it's nice and tight. Go ahead and stick it down. And there you go. You got your nice little, you can see the angle right there, the little stack pockets. So now for the part that I'm going to do different. So I'm going to use my piece BC. So this is five inches wide by seven and inch, seven and a half inches tall, scoring on the five inch side at a half an inch and go ahead and fold it so you don't see the tape. So you want to fold it down like this. What I'm going to do is go ahead and place this on top here. Again, eyeballing the center and roughly, probably about an eighth of an inch from the top to the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that's even. And I just realized I put my score tape on there. Hmm, I probably should have done this first. So you should go ahead and do this first. So I'll just go ahead and reapply my score tape. So let's see. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lift up a little piece of this one, a little piece of this one, and I'm going to take this off, but I'm going to put it back on after. Whoops, sugar. All right, let's try it again. Make sure you're lined up. 
so I'm lined up where I want to be. So now I'm going to go ahead and remove this tape here and go ahead and press that over. So now I can just put my lay my tape back down there and then add this little piece right there. Actually, you know what? While it's still like that, I'm going to go ahead and put some tape on that piece because I need tape there. I don't want to forget it when I go to put it together. So I would add that flap before you add the tape to the back. If not, just do what I did. All right, so now we have our little flap. Cute. So now you're going to cut four pieces and you're going to cut them at five and a half by three. And two of the pieces you're going to, so you're going to score a half inch all the way around. Two of the pieces you're going to go ahead and apply score tape to the three sides. Those are going to be your bottom pockets. And then, whoops, I didn't get this one. And then the other two pieces, you're going to go ahead and apply score tape just to the sides. Just like that. And now we're going to go ahead and add some more stack pockets. So let's go ahead and miter our corners. Now hopefully this works out right. I didn't test it, I just decided to go for it. So we may or may not be adding these to the inside. If we do, we might have to make some adjustments. So let's go ahead on the outside. So I'm going to need two of these. So on the outside pocket flap right here, we're going to go ahead and do these little pockets on it. Okay. Let's go ahead and we're going to line this up going from the all the way from this cut edge first going over and it looks good. So again, I'm going to go ahead just like I did the bottom one on the other half. Good to me. Good, good. So I'm going to go ahead and untuck this one here. Press it down. Rotate it back. Make sure everything's lined up good. I'm going to go ahead and add a piece of scotch tape to that bottom pocket. And now go ahead. There we go. And now for the stack pocket part, test it first. Make sure you line up nice and even. Oops. Yep, that looks good to me. So I'm going to go ahead. Stick this back in. Make sure oops. nice and even again. Just like that. So there, so now you have, you can see that right there, the cute stack pockets. This one will open up. And let's see if how these will work. Hold on. In case I have to make some adjustments. Hopefully not. All right, so again, making sure you're closer to this cut edge. And I look like I'm pretty good. All right, so on this one here, I just want to leave it like this. I don't really want to rotate it to do the bottom with the scotch tape, just because I can see where I am here. And I want to make sure, because if I turn it, I'm not going to see so well. So I think I'm pretty good like that.
And let's see. Oh, perfect. It folds down nice. Okay, so now, now I'm just going to go ahead, burnish these ones down good. Good, okay. You always want to test everything first before you actually stick them down, just in case you need to make a little adjustment. And if you are know you're good, then just go for it. Whoops. So, good, good. There, so now you've got a permanent set of stack pockets here, and then this one here will open up. And if you want to be sure you're going to go down, it's going to fold nice. Go ahead and burnish it a little more. So what I'm doing, just so you know, is I'm burnishing up because my pockets are right here. I don't want to try to slide it down and have my bone folder get stuck in my pockets. So I just want to make sure that that is going to fold over nice. And then just to be sure if I want to, I can go on this side and give it a good burnish down in my score tape smoothing. And there we go. Super cute. Hmm. All right. So that's a little alternative to what the other page was. And I think this is simple enough that people will understand how to do this instead of that, that weird folded page that I have. And like I said, I'll do another video on that if that is something you actually want to do. But I think that'll be a cute little alternative for you. All right, so I, let's go ahead and stick this down real quick. So again, this is going to be page BA. So we're on our B page now. And this is going to go here. Let me just zoom out. Whoops, out. So this is going to go right in here, nice, neat, and even, just like that. So I'm going to go ahead now and remove all, oh no, I'm not going to remove my score tape. Never mind. That one I can because it's not really, well, I'll actually put it down because I don't want it to accidentally stick. So again, I'm just going to go ahead and add some glue to the center here just to give it a chance to kind of stick where I want it before I remove my tape. And this will give me, again, wiggle room. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead, get this stuff down. And I think we look good just like that. Okay, and then I can go ahead and pull off all of my score tape. Don't want that side to stick because everything else is stuck. Perfect. So there we go. So that's a little alternative. And you'll get a little more thicker when you add all like the tags and stuff to the front and the back side, and then you'll have this here. So we have that just like that. All right. So now we will go ahead, I'm going to go ahead real quick and decorate this page off camera and I'll be back and show you what I did. Okay, so let me show you where I'm at. I did go ahead and decorate my pages. So my little stack pocket here and then the stack pocket here as well as here. So as I'm ma making this, it is kind of like, it's gonna stick up a little bit. And I don't want when you flip the page for this thing flapping around. So what I thought was because I did the little closure over here like this, I'd actually create another one on the bottom of my pocket right here. So I went ahead and prepped my two little pieces just as I did before. The only thing different now is I'm actually going to use smaller little brads. You can't even see them because I want to have the pictures right here. Whoops. I want to have the pictures on these little pieces of cardstock showing. So again, I backed them to some chipboard and made my holes. So now what I'm going to do is, let's see, 
I want to put these approximately where they're going to go when they stick. So let's do this one here first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and place him where I think I want him. And I'm going to go ahead and make a mark. And I'm actually going to use a black Sharpie just so I can see it. So I'm going to put a little dot inside the hole. So that gave me my little dot where I know where to punch. So let me go line this back up and put this piece where I want. And my kitty is going to go on this side. So, you know what, let's go ahead and get that one lined up first, just because it will be easier. So I'm going to go ahead and punch my hole. And then I'm going to go ahead and add this guy first. So go ahead and put my bread through. So put my, whoops, <laughs> put my brad through and opened it. Or, uh, yeah, I opened it before I put it on my paper. So now go ahead and put this through the hole. And then open up your little brad legs. There you go. A little better. Now this piece, just because it's going to have a little more, I want to actually go ahead and do some score tape over my brad right here. So I'm just going to add some of that. Just want to reinforce it a little more so it doesn't come off. And now I can go ahead and glue on my pocket piece. And I'm using a smaller brad so I want to just make sure I have the tape on there. And you're also going to notice my camera adjusting. My sun is setting here. So you're probably going to notice some changes as I'm going through here. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that is on. Okay, so he's there now. So now I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do the same for this guy. And this piece is a little darker, so let's see. He's lined up right there. And let's see, put my kitty, oops, bring him down a little more. So this one, because it's black paper, I'm not going to see the Sharpie. I'm going to go ahead and use my white gel pen. Put my little dot right there. So there's my little dot right by the Y and fly. I'm going to go ahead and punch this one. And go ahead again and stick my brad through. Press it down. You now I make sure my kitty is going to be facing the right direction. So you can see my little kitty hanging out there. So I'm going to go ahead and add some tape. Keep that piece in place. Right there. And again, just make sure I rotate this up a little bit. Actually, it didn't matter because this spins. So it wouldn't matter if the kitty was right or not. I did make sure that when I punch these circles out, I punched as close to the edge for the kitty. So I wouldn't be like, you know, stabbing him through the head with the brad. I wanted him showing. So now I'm going to go ahead and tape. I mean, I glue up my piece. Just like that. Move my tape. Go ahead and push that down. And there we go. 
And so then just like the other one, I am really losing my color. Hold on, let me adjust. All right, we'll see if we can get through this page before I have to adjust some more. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and again, some twine. I'm going to go ahead and add it to this piece here, wrap it around, and then I'm just going to tie it. Okay. And go ahead and cut that off. And then just like before, I'm going to go ahead and give it a few little bits here. And I want to make sure this guy, I want pretty close. I don't really want him hanging out from underneath my album. He's a little, little bit bigger. So this is a little sun charm. So I want him to go right there. So let me unwrap it a little bit. And I'm just going to knot it. Just like that, and then back around. Perfect. All right, I'll trim that off after. But anyway, so now that will keep everything nice and tidy and closed. So when you flip it, it's not going to have, you're not going to have a floppy page. All right, so it's just a cute little extra decorative element right there just to kind of make this part a little more fancy considering we did tone it down a little bit. All right, I will be back and we'll get started on the next page. Okay, so now we are going to work on this little fancy flip and fold page right here. And it has a little belly band. So we're going to go ahead and get started on that one. And that's how it closes up. So for that page, you are going to need some pieces. And let me just flip and tell you what you need. All right, so again, we're using our eight by eight sheet of cardstock. And then I went ahead and cut my pattern paper seven and three quarters by seven and three quarters. And on this piece here, we can just actually go ahead and attach this one. So let's get that out of the way first. Let me get this on. We're getting close to the finish line. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this on. Eyeball it to centered. All right. So now we have this one ready to go. So let's see. I'm going to give you your other pieces. So we're going to need a belly band. And our belly band is going to be two and a half inches wide by nine and an eighth. And you're going to score a half inch on each end of this belly band. So it'll be half inch and eight and five eighths will be your score line. You're going to apply the tape to the edges and you're going to fold in so you don't see the tape because you're actually going to go ahead and tuck this around like this. Okay. So let's see, I want to make sure it's centered. So let's go ahead and center this one off. So we are at two and a half inches wide. I don't have my pencil. I swear I lose stuff every time I go to do something. Okay, I guess I'm going to use a pen. My pencil is probably right there. I just can't see it. Hmm. I don't know how I always manage to lose stuff. 
Okay. Well, anyway, it is two and a half inches wide. So my center on this is should be, let's see, out one and a uh, one and a quarter inches out from the center point. So make a little mark there. Doesn't matter about the marks on this part because this is going to be on the back. So you are not going to see those. And then my paper, I also want to make sure I have the center. So obviously if it's eight inches, my center point will be at four. So four here, four here. And then turn it around and we'll do the same thing. Now just because I want to make sure that I can see this when I go to put everything on, I'm going to go ahead and draw a line. And I'm still looking for my pencil. I'm going to draw a line right straight up. Just because it's going to make it easier to see it. So I know you can't see that because you can't find the pencil. So on this here, what I'm going to do now is my happy little happy scary little pumpkins. So what I do with having the line that I drew on the back here, and I know you can't see that. Hold on. Let's go ahead and use a white gel pen. And then you'll understand what I did. Oops. Oh, I might even not on it. Well, I messed that one up. All right. I don't know which one it is. And then let's go ahead and make a little tick mark where my center point is on that one. Okay. So what I'm going to do, so I'm going to take my belly band and I want to attach it like this. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to line up. Which one's my right one? This one here. So I'm just going to line up these two like that. So my white dot in here matches my my white line. So put that there. And right there. So then I just line them up. Ignore the top white line right there. Oops. So now I can flip it over. And I have that done there. So now I'm let's see. I might as well go ahead and add this little guy here. Get him out of the way. And then I'll show you how to do the flaps. Or the pocket flaps, I should say. And we will add score tape to the back, but we need to get the flaps on first. Or we'll run into the same problem as I ran into when I was doing that other page. So there we go. Cute little bats. I love this paper. All right, so now you're going to need some photo mat flaps. We'll do the pockets after. So you're going to need two pieces that are going to be four and three quarters by six and a quarter. And you're going to score a half inch on the four and three quarter inch side. And you're going to fold in so you do not see the tape because we're going to wrap it around that one there. And then you're going to need two pieces that are four and three quarters by six and a quarter. Score on the six and three quarter at a half inch. Apply your tape. And again, you're going to fold over so you don't see the tape. And let's get started. We're going to add these first. So let me just look at my book real quick. Let's see where I put them. All right, so we're going to go with our top flap first. So this one is going to go approximately right about there. So you're just going to go over a little bit. And the idea for all of these flaps is so when you put photos underneath the belly band, all the flaps are going to keep your photos and whatever you stick inside the belly band is going to keep it all contained. So we're going to go ahead and add this one first. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Just kind of eyeball where you want it. Looks good to me. You will have a little bit of bulk because of 
the belly band that's there. Let's go ahead and stick that down. And I don't like how I got that one, so I'm going to actually undo that because I can see all my tape and I think I went crooked. So first time doing undo on here. So if you do get stuck, it is super easy to, or you get something not right, undo is super easy just to take it right off. Let that dry a second. It's also kind of good, like, if you do mess up like that, if you put the undo on and it's still, um, it's still kind of wet from the undo, you can actually kind of place it down and play with it. And if it's not right, then you can just go ahead and take it off. There we go. So that's better. And if I wanted to right now, because it's not completely dry, I can just peel that off and then reposition it again. All right, so then this one here, the other bottom one, is now going to go off center a little. So instead of doing it over, I'm going to stick it this way first. Just eyeballing it. My belly band goes down a little wider than I'd like. So it's right up on that score line. So I'm just going to re-burnish it just a little bit. Okay, so we have that now. And then I don't need this now. I know what I'm doing, where I'm sticking those. So then this one here. Now these ones are going to be easy because there's nothing keeping these things stuck. So this one again going to go right up to the edge there. Make sure you got it in nice and tight. Just like that. And you do want to make sure you burnish stuff down so you get a good, good stick on it. And this one's going to go up to the top. Just like that. Oops, why is it crooked? There. There we go. So there's this one like this. So now before we start adding too much to it, let's go ahead and add our tape to the back. down. Oh my gosh. Now I lost that piece. I swear. I don't even move and I'm losing my pieces. Oh, there it is. show you how to make the pockets. Okay, perfect. So cute. All right, so let's let's see. Let's do the easier one first. So this piece you're just going to make a little corner pocket right here. This is what's going to keep everything tucked in when you close it all up. So It'll go like this, and then you'll have the little corner pocket here, and your tabs and stuff will keep this as, I mean, the tags will keep this as a closure right here. So for that piece, you are going to cut a piece four and a half by four and a half. You're only going to need half of this, so only tape half. And let's go ahead and cut this. So you're going to go corner to corner. And just go ahead and 
take that piece off and then you're going to want to miter your corners. Oops, sorry if that was loud. I didn't realize. I forgot it was up by the mic. And then let's see. I like to go the back side sometimes. I can see my score lines better. If I go ahead and cut from the back side. And then I little trimming. Okay, good. So now I'll go ahead and burnish this. All right, let me go in a little closer. All right, so on the bottom corner one here, this is where you're going to stick the corner pocket. Again, making sure everything is lined up. Push that down. And then again, that one right there. So you have a nice little corner pocket. I'm not doing anything on the inside of these because these four inside pieces are going to just be photo mats. So now let me show you how to do the little corner pockets. So you are going to need three pieces that are going to be four and a half by five and a quarter. And you're going to score on the five and a quarter each end at a half an inch and on the one uh, four and a half inch side at a half inch. So your pocket overall is going to be four inches deep. Now on this one here, when you're used to using the dies and the tags, when you cut out your cardstock, generally you use this piece right here, the whole fancy one. But because we're kind of doing a reverse pocket style kind of, I don't know how else to describe it other than reverse, you're actually going to cut out your piece with, actually I had the wrong dies. I'm using the larger dies on this one. If you don't mind all my tape all over it. Okay, so when you cut it, you're going to cut the cardstock with the piece that you normally would be doing your pattern paper. So that would be this piece right here. Because when you do your pattern paper, you want your pattern paper on the outside and it's going to go like that. So you're doing the reverse from what you would normally do. And on these specific dies here, let me show you how to do it. So again, just like the others, go ahead, don't apply tape yet, but go ahead and make sure you do crease all your lines because like I said, when you run it through your machine, you're going to lose the crease and it's going to make it a little hard to make it even. So let me go ahead and show you how I do this one. So for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to eyeball. So I'm making sure the corner part of my die right here, this little corner piece is going to be lined up with the cut edge of my paper. So it looks like it's probably about a quarter inch. So I'm going to make sure I am a quarter inch from the score line here and a quarter inch from the score line there. So I'm just going to go ahead, make sure it's down and I'm going to tape it in place. just like that. And then I'll go ahead and cut this out with you. Okay, so this is all cut out now and just comes right off. So that's how you get this piece. So again, I just lined up the edges of the edges of my die. Ah, get up there. So the edges of my die right here with that paper. All right, so now you can go ahead and add your tape. And we're going to go ahead and get these attached to down. So 
So real quick, the overall dimensions so you know what to cut your cardstock at. So your pocket itself is going to be four, four by four and a quarter. So what you want to do is for your pattern paper, make sure you're careful with the direction of it. So you're going to go three and three quarters by four. Okay, and that's what this piece is here. So what I did was I first laid this down, made sure it was going to fit had I not cut this piece out. And then with my larger die, now this one was easy to do. So with this one here, it's pretty much this, the width of this die. So it was easy just to make sure when I laid it on my paper that I was lined up you know, pretty much straight across. And again, I went to right to the edge here where before it starts to loop down my paper, I went right to the edge of that spot. And that's how I cut that piece out. All right, so let me just show you real quick. Let's go ahead and get these mitered. And then this page is almost done other than just decorating it. Let's go ahead and get these pieces attached. So again, I'm going to go ahead and line it all up. Make sure I'm nice and even. Now I wouldn't worry about the little bit that's overhanging on your flap here, this piece, because you're going to stick pattern paper inside it and you're not even going to see it. So this way you'll have the full coverage to get it um, down nice and straight and secured so there's no lifting of it. Okay. And again, if you want to add some scotch tape to that spot, you can go ahead and do that. that one down and then now we'll do this side. I'm just going to rotate this just to make it easier for me when I'm putting these pockets on. I'm just going to burnish it again. Make sure we're lined up. And then the last one. And then this one is going to go this way. So I'm just turning it around. Looks good. And if you do the scotch tape, you'll definitely appreciate it when you're going in and matting this stuff. Like I said, it creates a little ramp and then your pattern paper will just slide right in. Okay, so there we go. So I just have to go ahead and decorate all this. So the way you close it up is the two, these two go like this. This one comes down. This one goes up like this. And then your tags and stuff here will try to keep it all nice and neat. So now let's go ahead and add this to our book. So it's going to go on the back side of B. That's what we're working on right now. Let's go ahead and eyeball it. Now, you will notice your book is starting to get thick. 
So when you're doing the back sides, you're going to notice that it's it's starting to like get bumpy. Looks like I've kept my cover off too long on my glue. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, make sure I get this lined up. Let's go ahead and press down with my glue. And again, I'm just eyeballing everything looks good to me, so I'm going to go and find my first piece of score tape to take off. That stuck down. And it looks pretty even, so now I can just go ahead and get the rest off. And there we go. Let's get it all pressed down there. It's nice and tidy. There, just like that. All right, so I am going to go ahead and decorate the rest of this off camera, and I'll be back in a minute and show you what it looks like. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you what I did on this page. So before I explain this part, let me show you my decorating part. So uh, this is what I went ahead and did. Let me just zoom out a tad. So these are the pockets right there and then your belly band. All right, so then this all closes up like this and this comes up. Now, originally what was supposed to happen was the tags were supposed to fit in here and keep everything closed. But I haven't even added the tags yet to my pockets and it's already kind of sticking up. So before you attach the pattern paper to here and to here, well, let me zoom in again so you can see what I got. So before you add the pattern paper to this little corner pocket and this piece, go ahead and do the little closure part like I did over here. So if you just go back and follow the steps for this closure, you can do this closure. I'd do a little maneuvering around to get it on like that because I had already put my stuff on, my pattern paper on and realized. So I actually kind of think that this turned out to be a happy accident only because I really like this better. And then it just hangs down like that. And I have a little witch hat charm on this one here. I kind of like how this looks. And everything is tucked in nice and neat. So I'm really kind of liking using these little policy style envelope closures on it. And I actually might go back and do one here as well. Just to kind of keep the theme going on this. Because I'm really enjoying it. And it's keeping everything tucked nice and neat. Alright, so let's go ahead and we're going to start on... Um, the C piece, the top piece, I'm going to cut my pieces and I'll be back and show you that. And I also just might get this done too when I come back. All right, I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I felt that this needed a little bit of explanation as to what I'm doing on this page right here. So I figured my video is already going to be 10,000 hours long. Let's go for 12. So what I did was, because I've already added these on, and this might come in handy for you in the future when you decide that you want to also add this type of a closure on your album, um, this is how I did it. So I figured I would explain it to you because that is also how I did this side here. So because my tag here comes down so far, in order to put the closure on, it's going to actually end up tucking under this. So I decided to do kind of like a three-way tie closure so I can wrap the string like this and then keep the pocket closed. So real quick what I did was I punched out some black circles with my one inch punch and I punched out three out of cardstock and I glued all three together and then I punched out my 
pattern paper one and glued that on top. So technically this is four layers, three cardstock, one pattern. And what I did was I used my little template when I made my center and I put it on the back side, went ahead, put it down, and then I used my gel pen and put a dot on it and then went ahead and punched it with my punch. And then a second piece you need, it's going to be two layers of chipboard together. And when you do this, you don't want to, you want to make sure that these two separate pieces, because these are not going to get glued together. You want to make sure that you do these and then make sure you keep the two together because your holes may not always line up. So then you, once you have the hole in this, lay this over, you'll have the opening and then you can go ahead and make your white dot. You can see the white dot right there. So then you can go ahead and just punch it. Like so. And then what you want to do, so these are not gonna get glued together, so, but you're gonna put them together. And you're going to place your brad down through the center and go ahead and open up the brad legs and then just push it down so you make it nice and flat just like that. And then what you want to do is go between the two layers, so the three, the one with the four and the one with two, and you just want to like put your finger under and kind of get the top layer, the one with the pattern paper, to kind of come up a little bit because you want to be able to put your string in between. So you want to just kind of give it a little lift so you can see right there. And you just want to give it a little lift. And the reason you're doing that is because this part here now is going to get glued down to your paper. So now what you want to do is you want to go ahead and glue this down. Make sure you have enough glue but not enough that's going to overhang. And then all I'm doing is just going to eyeball it. And then I'm going to go ahead and stick it down. Now before you add, I need a little lower. That's good. So before you go ahead and add your string, just make sure that those three pieces are your three closures. If you're doing three, you could just do two if you shortened up the tag. But make sure they're glued down really well before you take and add your twine. And what I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to have my, because I've already glued this, so I can go ahead and add this one on. So, do that. Oops. Let me go ahead and cut this piece. So when I go ahead and wrap, which I'm not going to do just yet because this one is still gluing on, but I'm just going to basically, you know, go like a little triangle like this. And then I'll end up at the top and then my dangle part of my charm will hang down here. And I actually found a cute little vampire teeth with charm. It's a vampire teeth charm. And I have a little bats on here. So I thought the charm on that part would kind of go cute. Alrighty. So I will be back to show you that other page. I just felt that this was something worth showing. Okay, home stretch people, home stretch. So we are going to work on this page right here. This has a magnetic closure and it has some photo flaps, some large ones. So there's lots of room and lots of space to go ahead and add some photos to here. And like I said, a little magnetic closure right here. But considering we've been using that little string closure, I think we're going to wrap it up. This is the last page that needs a closure. And I kind of think that this page needs that too. So you already know how to do that part. So I'm not going to show you. But just keep in mind, go ahead and put your pattern paper on this page and on this page on the top. Don't add it here yet till you add your closure with the little string loops. And then you can go ahead and put these on and then just decorate the pages just as such. I am not actually using magnets for a specific reason and that's because I am out. I placed an order almost a month ago and it's taking forever to get here from China. So hopefully that means they're almost here, but I did order a bunch of them. So waiting for those to come in. So in the meantime, it's kind of a happy little accident because I'm using the string closure and I have to admit, I'm really liking it. 
So let's continue. So eight by eight sheet of card stock, just as normal. And I went ahead and I measured um, a four inch center line across the back here. And you're going to need two pieces, five and a half by four and a quarter. And you're gonna score on the five and a half inch side at a half inch on both these pieces. Go ahead and apply your score tape just like that. And I already went ahead and found my center point on these and I put a little white dot. I did it to both and then when I was kind of figuring it out, I decided I was going to assemble this a little different. So on one of these, you're going to fold the, your flap down so you don't see the tape. It's underneath. And one, you're going to fold so you can see the tape. It doesn't matter bumpy side, non-bumpy side. It doesn't really matter with this assembly. So you're going to go ahead and do those two. And then you're going to score one piece at eight by six and a half. And you're going to score on the six and a half inch side at a half inch. And then you need a second piece that is going to be eight by seven and a half and score on the seven and a half inch side at a half inch. All right, so let's go ahead and assemble. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to add the flap with the tape that you can't see once you fold it down. Now this is going to help you get everything lined up square. So because I already made my lines on the back, I'm going to go ahead and line up my white dot to my white line. Just as so. So everything is lined up, making sure that it is all going to be nice and snug. Oops. So nice and tight. Now I'm going to go ahead and lift the flap and go ahead and add my flap down. So that's going to be this piece right here. Now what you want to do is we're going to go ahead and add these. And you know what? Let's go ahead and add my tape to the back real quick so I don't forget. And this page is so super simple. So if you've already made it this far, either making it or watching it. This is the home stretch. I made these last pages pretty simple and part of it is because when I was making the album, to be honest, I was getting tired and wanted to wrap it up. Plus the fact that these back pages here on the album, they're pretty flat. So I didn't want to chunk them up because there's no gusset like on page A and page B. So you kind of want to keep those pages in the back as flat as possible. Otherwise, they're really going to look weird. If you wanted to chunk it up and do more, then you could add a gusset like you did with the other pages. All right, so that's on there like that. Now what I'm going to do is I want my larger piece first. So this is the eight by seven and a half. And I'm going to line it right up, right to the edge. So it is the same size. So it should line up square to the top and to the bottom and then right to the edge. And I'm going to go ahead and stick this down just like that. So we're all lined up. And now I'm going to take my six and a half by eight inch piece, fold this over. And this is going to go on top of that one. And again, making sure everything is lined up. Go ahead and stick this one down. So you have your flaps just like this. Now this one here you can open up. Go ahead and put those ones down. And now the one, your flap with the tape that's going to be when you fold, you can see it. You're going to go ahead again and this on top of this. Now, so you know you're going to line it up even. You're going to go all the way to the edge here to make sure it's lined up and then make sure that your two flaps line up here and here. And that's the easiest way to make sure that this thing is all going to be centered. And then you can go ahead and stick that one down. Just like that. And then it all opens up. Here's my white dot that I had before. It's gonna get covered with pattern paper. So you're not even gonna see that. And that goes all like that just like this. And again, I'm going to do that little string closure right there. So when I come back and show it to you all decorated, you will see that. 
So let's go ahead and attach this one now. So this is going to be your CA piece. And I love how I can flip these and nothing flaps. So real quick, I did go ahead and went ahead and strung this up right here. And it just literally goes, looks like a bicycle. Literally just goes right around. And hangs down just like that. But I love the fact that that string keeps everything nice and tidy on all these pages. And I'm really liking that. So now this page here is going to go right here, center it on this page. And it's pretty easy. I don't, this is pretty flat, so I don't think I'm going to bother with the glue on this one. I think the tape will hold it down just fine because there's not a lot to chunk this one up. So once you eyeball it off, you know you got it where you need it. Go ahead, hold it down. And I'm going to find my tape. There's that piece. And now I can just go ahead and peel these ones off. Oops. And then I can just go ahead and press this down. All right, super easy. This page is a fun, nice, easy one. Lots of big photo mats for you to go ahead and add lots of photos. And I think, I'm trying to figure out, I think I'll make it so this is the top flap. And then I will put my closures right here. So this will be my top flap. All right, so that was a nice, easy page. So getting there, getting there, almost done. So I will go ahead, decorate these ones, and be back in a minute and show you what I did. All righty, so let me show you what I did on this page. So I went ahead and did my string closure. And as you can see, this cute image of the haunted house. And then these are how I decorated these pages here. Alrighty, so I will be back and we will get started on the next page. Okay, so now we are going to go ahead and wrap up the last of this page and the back page. So we're going to do the last page and the back cover. So for the last page, which is would be page C in the back side, which I'm calling CV, where you need a piece of paper that is cardstock eight by eight again. And now we're, this is going to be just some stack pockets. So now we're going to need two pieces and you're going to need one piece at four and a half by nine. On the nine inch side, you're going to score a half inch on each end. And on the four and a half inch side, half inch on this side. And then you're going to need one piece that is nine by three and a half. And you're going to score on each end at a half inch on the nine inch side. And on the three and a half inch side, you're going to score um, just one side at a half inch, apply tape to just the sides only, and then the main pocket you're going to apply the score tape all the way around as you see there. And we're just going to go ahead and attach them. So also on this piece I've already applied my tape all the way around. So I'm just going to miter my corners. And I'm going to do that on both pieces. just like that. And I'm going to go ahead on the, the top pocket. We're not going to touch this line. That's going to tuck into our pocket. So go ahead and fold. And you're going to want to miter. And, oh, we already mitered. I'm sorry. We're going to burnish. I've literally been working on this tutorial all day. And I'm so happy we are at the end. And I absolutely love how this is coming out. So I can't wait to show you the completed album. All right. So now we're going to take our eight and a eight inch piece and we're going to go ahead and lay our pocket on the top. Real simple. So we're going to go ahead, stick this one down. 
and I just want to go ahead and add some scotch tape to that piece. Go ahead and stick that one down. And then my pocket here, just going to test it, make sure we are all good, and we are. So now I'm going to remove the tape from the sides. Stick it back in there. Let's turn it. There we go. Perfect. Go ahead and press those down. So now this piece here is going on the back side of this one. And again, we're just going to eyeball it all, make sure we're centered pretty good. That looks good to me. And then we'll just go ahead and remove the tape. I just want to make sure I didn't move it. I felt like I moved it a little. Go ahead and get one part stuck down so you know where you need to be, and then go ahead and remove the rest. And go ahead the rest of the way. Now this piece here, because it is an eight by eight square, you could always rotate your pockets. If you didn't want them going the side direction, you could easily you know, make them go up or go from the inside. I just wouldn't really recommend going from this side though and sliding in just for the fact that you're, if your stuff falls out and you're not paying attention, you could actually fold um, some of your mats in your photos. So I kind of like it going this direction. All right, and now we just have this back piece to do, and on that one, what we're going to do is, this is just simple little corner pockets, so I have a piece here that is six by six, pretty certain it's six by six, I don't think I wrote it down, yep, so let me just write that real quick so I don't forget. So then what you want to do on this piece is we are going to make a corner pocket. So again, line up my spots and I'm going to go ahead and slice that. Just like that. And I won't put that ruler back up there just because I don't know what kind of noise it made the last time I did that. So I'm going to go ahead and cut off and angle all my corner pockets. There we go. And go ahead and burnish them down. These two pockets here are going to overlap a little bit, and that's part of the design element for this page. And this back page is a little bigger than the rest of the pages. So on this piece, this is my pattern paper. And on this one, I cut this one eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter. And let's see, what would be the easiest way? Do I do it like that? I do it like that and oops. Oh, I like that. Okay, so we're actually what I want to do on this one is I'm going to actually fold my pockets inward so you don't see the tape. And this will make it much easier to go ahead and line everything up properly. 
So we're just going to flip that around. And I got a little nubbins. Let's get rid of that. All right, so on this one here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm sticking this in nice and tight. Make sure it's in there nice and square and tight. So you can see. And then I'm going to go ahead and remove my tape and stick that corner pocket down. So I have this. And now this one I'm going to go ahead and lay over the top just like that. And again, make sure it's in there nice and tight. And go ahead and stick that one in. And then just give it a good burnish. And there we go. So now I don't have to worry about, um, you know how when you have the pockets I've been using the scotch tape? Now you don't even have to worry about it because they're on the back side. And then we're just going to stick this down right here. Just kind of eyeball it and center it. So for this, I'm going to go ahead, because it is the back cover, I'm going to go ahead and apply some tape. And other than putting some pattern paper on these little corner pockets, and on my stacked envelope sides, we are about ready to make the cover. And that is super exciting. That's kind of like the icing on the cake when you finish doing the cover. You usually do the cover last just because that way you don't get any scuff marks and stuff on it. So let's go ahead and put line this one up, get rid of the glare. So let's see, I'm going to all the way to the edge. Do I want it to go to the bottom? Yeah, I'm going to make this go to the bottom just to cover up a lot of my paper down here. And the top doesn't matter because it's open, it's an open pocket. So that looks really good to me. So let's go ahead and get this stuck. ahead and get this stuff down nice. Perfect. Alrighty. So let me just go ahead get some design paper on these sections right here and I'll show you that one. Okay so I went ahead and decorated my pockets and you can see that and that I decorated the corner pockets here. And then also, like I said, when I had my scraps left over, I was gonna decorate this. So I'll just give you a full walkthrough when my album is completely done. And then that way you can see all the nice little details on that. So now basically all the pages are done. And the only thing left now to do is actually work on the cover to make our shaker element. And I'm really excited to get this piece done. All right, so I'll be back in a minute once I get everything prepped and ready to go. All right, so let me walk you through what I have done so far for my cover. So what I did was I decided on which page that I wanted for my cover sheet and I chose this one here. So the measurements of this one is nine and three quarters by eight and three quarters and I cut um, a border of an inch and a half all the way around and then I applied a piece of acetate on that and the acetate piece is seven by eight so I went ahead and stuck that down. Now what I wanted to do to make sure is I wanted my frame to actually go over the inside here because I didn't want to have to like kind of measure and get everything even to have like this little border frame. You can't see it right now because the tape's there, but I wanted to make sure that it was covered. Let me just go in a little more so you can see where the tape is there and I didn't want to have to worry about that. So I just wanted to go ahead and get that cut out 
So now it is time to add the glitter. And, or not glitter, I got um, these little seed bead things I'm going to put in here. Just figuring out what colors. So I'm going to just go ahead and start dumping them on. <laughs> that looks neat. And yeah, let's see what other color. I'll do this color. <laughs> Can you see that? That is so cool. Um, I think that's about all I'm going to use. Um, yeah, that'll work. So everything is in there. And then I have some little confetti colors. These are Halloween. And these are some spiders and some ghosts and things that say boo. So I'm just going to go ahead and dump these on. I'm going to go ahead and dump quite a few. Yeah, maybe not tending that many. So I'm going to go ahead and spread those out. Now I didn't couldn't find these when I made my original book, but since then, obviously, I have found them. So get those spread out nice and neat. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put my cover on. Just double checking again, making sure everything looks good. So let's see. Let's take this tape off first. And let's go ahead and just do this one because kind of only got one shot at this. And it's going to be a little harder to peel up my tape the way I usually do. So I'm going to just really eyeball this really good. All right. And I'm going to stand up for this. And I'm just going to check it out. And I think, perfect. So let's go ahead and get this pressed down really well because I don't want my shaker pieces to come out. There you go. That is so cool. Neat. Alrighty, so that is the cover. Exciting. I got this done. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go ahead off camera. I'm going to do the spine. I'm going to get the back. I'm going to make all of my little pocket pieces and stuff and just go ahead and finish embellishing it all out with my tags and stuff. And I will be back and I will share with you a final review of my book. All right. I'll see you in a while. All right, so we are all done making the video, or video tutorial, I should say. And if you've made it this far, I can't thank you enough for watching this video tutorial series that I've created. And if you have any questions, just leave them down below. I will have a separate video for a full walkthrough on this. And until next time, guys, happy crafting. And thank you so much for checking out this mini album. If you do make it, just go ahead and tag me. I am on all social media as Patty's Crafty Spa. And I really enjoy to see what you guys are going to go ahead and do with this. All right. And until next time, guys, happy crafting. Bye.